a handsome young man named Chris met a beautiful woman named Ellen. They fell in love. They got married. They had three children, two dogs, and had a beautiful house in the country, and they had a very happy life together. Is this a story? In the traditional sense, maybe it's got a couple of, it's got some characters and it's got some circumstances, but no, this is not a story. Why? Because it's just a series of facts and figures and data. This is the problem with a lot of business presentations today. It's facts, figures, and data. It's information I can download from the internet. It's not giving me any useful insights. However, this short vignette can be turned into a story by adding one little word. This word can make all the difference and it can make for a memorable experience. Let's listen to this story again. A handsome young man named Chris met a beautiful young woman named Ellen. They fell in love. They got married. They had three kids, two dogs, a beautiful house in the country, and they lived a very happy life together. But then Chris disappeared. What happened in your brain the moment you heard that Chris disappeared? When I ask this question in workshops and seminars, people say things like, well, what happened? Where did Chris go? Uh, was he kidnapped? Did he leave voluntarily? Did he abandon his family? Is he murdered? What's going on? When you introduce the word, but, and you change the pace, the direction of this narrative, and now it becomes a story, you've introduced tension. One of my mentors was a Hollywood screenwriting consultant for 30 years, and he taught me that the story doesn't begin until there's conflict. Well, tension is the start of conflict. Your brain now has questions. As you've heard about in my workshops, people ask all these different questions. They want to know what's going on. You've created what's called an open loop. This is good for storytelling. It gets us out of data delivery mode and starts to create an entertainment factor. There's interaction with the brains of the audience and they stay engaged until you close that loop. It all starts with a three letter word, but. It may be small in number, but it has a big impact. Ergo, the title of this video is why your story needs a big but, because the but changes the direction and creates the conflict and starts us down the road of story. Now, in reality, you don't need to use just the word but. You can use different alternatives like yet, however, despite. And I would encourage you to look up a thesaurus if you want to use you know, different options there. I've got some listed below this video. But the key is you need to start the tension by sending the story in a new direction. And this word, but, does that for you. I was introduced to this concept about a year and a half ago by a man named Randy Olson. He is a scientist turned filmmaker, and he has great insights into this concept. I highly recommend you pick up a couple of his books on Amazon. One is called Houston, We Have a Narrative. His other book is Narrative is Everything. He goes much deeper into this topic. I just wanted to provide you some opening insight into this to help create some tension and add emotion to your story. Start with that go deeper, you'll pick up some future tips for me also, but add some life to your story by including a big but. If you would like more insight into storytelling, feel free to sign up for my complimentary, no obligation, 52 storytelling tips. Each week, you'll get a five-minute audio lesson delivered to your email box. You'll have a downloadable PDF transcription of that lesson also, and the idea behind this is to build one skill on top of another over one year time. If I can be of any help to you, please feel free to contact me, Mike at Speaking CPR. I look forward to seeing you on the next tip.